Hey, what's up guys? This is Oakley, and we're going to be going over a recent video released by CA. Sorry I couldn't get on it immediately. I was away for Thanksgiving. I'm sure you guys were busy too, so the channel was on autopilot. A bunch of those videos were uploaded in the past, and then they were kind of um, scheduled for release, so I wasn't quite able to do updated stuff, but now I'm going to be getting back into it. So right at the start, we're going to start off looking at the new capital of the Roman Empire at Mediolanum. And this is going to be modern day Milan, and that's because the seat of imperial power has moved away from Rome. Rome is still one of the largest cities in the known world at this time. It's very massive, but the seat of power kind of moves and goes where the emperor is at. And this is something that developed in the 3rd and 4th century, and I'll talk about that in a separate video. But it is now seated elsewhere. And then here, what's really cool is they show the different overlays that you can get for the map, and it makes it much more intuitive as to how you look at your forces. And something I want to point out here, you have Flavia Stilico, which is still here. And look at the borders. This is barbarians at the gates for sure. You have the legions stationed there and their strength. They're trying to hold back the barbarians. And look at that, the Swabians have penetrated into the empire. So you can see just the amount of pressure that's going to be facing the Western Roman Empire and why they are saying that this is going to be a campaign of survival and um, very, very difficult playing as this side. And you can also toggle a couple different things. And here you can see, for example, um, some of your spies and agents visible here, seeing what they can do. But also, look at this. Western Roman separatists are over in the Eastern Roman Empire. That was very interesting. I'm, I'd love to know what's going on in this campaign. Um, and I want to know the dynamics of separatist forces, how that works, and how they've been able to manage to go all the way to the Eastern Roman Empire. Is this some usurper who's coming in and spreading? What does the West look like at this point in that campaign? Very, very interesting. And here you can start looking over at the various settlements and some of the um, particular um, sort of items that they have in each of their factions. So for instance, this one can have salt, but at this point in time it has zero, so maybe that'll change with time as you, have, as you progress on your building development. Um, but it's cool to see how each different one will have an item they can trade. Not all of them do have those, but most of them will. For example, this one, Avericum, will have gold. At this point, it's either been underdeveloped or exhausted, or maybe ravaged because you can see the Swabian barbarian force, marauding force, in that territory, and it's been stated that uh, marauding forces will have, uh, they will degrade local um, productivity and stuff like that. So maybe that's why the gold is low. Maybe it's been pillaged and pl um, plummeted. Um, here above you can see another icon to look at the all the sieges that are in progress. Very, very good way to manage your empire at this point in time. And also look at the character icons for each of the empires. Oh my god, those look so much better than Rome 2. Like, light years ahead. Um, they look beautiful, like awesome. The themes of them are looking great. I love the little details, and you can see um, more icons for them. And here you go, you can see a little bit more for the resources of each territory. Um, the salt and the gold that I mentioned before, they're there, specific to each region. And then look around Italia, around Rome. You see a little cross that probably has something to do with religious tourism or maybe the sale of relics I'm not quite sure how that works but it's very interesting uh, and uh, look at where the Alamans have there's like a, a jewel right there so pretty interesting and then I just wanted to pause on another screen and show you the diversity of resources that you'll be able to trade iron um, so yeah there will be a pretty vibrant economy in this point in time and uh, I like to see how it plays into um, the productivity of each region, the wealth of each region, and then also if the attacking barbarians can go and like steal some of these gold rich uh, regions. That would be pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, I'm mousing over the gold again. And here you can see the region wealth uh, and it's overlaid. So you, this is this is good to see from a strategic sense. If you have barbarians coming in, you can see their armies here and you can see, okay, which, which territories do I have to defend most? Maybe you can forego those which have really low region wealth and focus more. You can see, for example, here where the Western Roman Empire is, the capital it's guarding, Italy. Italy seems to be a very productive region. Uh, historically, it would have been actually more so Great Britain was very productive. Uh, North Africa is very productive. And here you can see uh, Massilia, or they've changed the, the, the province name here, but uh, a wealth of 14, 17, so definitely you're going to want to guard these key regions. And look at all those barbarian forces at the gates one more time, staring down on the Western Roman Empire. So I'm very interested to see how the, um, the invasions play out. We'll talk about that in the future, though. Uh, and then here you can see a little bit more on the uh, food resources. And like I said before, look where the Swaby Force is. Around them, it's all been marauded and pillaged, and it's been stated before that uh, once... Uh, pillaging forces come into your territories, they'll decrease the amount of food you have, so it can lead to a lot of problems. Uh, for example, here, even Italy, uh, Rome, and some other territories seem to be uh, in the grips of famine, so you're definitely going to have to manage that and keep food supplied to your empire. And then also you have a religious overlay. I like how they've tried to have all these different religions represented as opposed to culture. Um, at this point in time, people are saying that the division between uh, religious, um, especially with Christianity, the orthodoxy versus uh, traditional or non-traditional 
Orthodoxy is a little bit of um, anachronistic, but at this point in time, there was sort of a minute difference between the Christianities practiced in the East and the West, Aryan Christianity and stuff like that. So I like that it's being represented, um, although it may be blown out of proportion in terms of how vastly different it is appearing to be. And then here you can also look at the fertility within the regions. It's interesting to see how the core of the empire is all going to be pretty fertile. And then as you go to where the barbarians are to the north, they're going to be mostly infertile. And so it seems like, you know, you want to be in the Western Roman Empire because the standard of living is high and it's going to allow for your population to grow. Speaking of population, I'd be interested to see how that plays out. I have heard somewhere that um, there are like buffs for the Western Roman Empire where they will suffer from uh, more... Um, uh, inflow of people from displaced from the war refugees coming in so I want to see how that ties into um, population but anyways I'm getting behind schedule here you're gonna see a faction overlay you can now scale it to see a lot more and then based on the top you can actually um, filter which factions are listed from top to bottom and so you can see by the number of regions Eastern Roman Empire and look at that the Sassanid Empire is coming in you know a third the size but still pretty powerful and this is gonna be a very useful tool to figure out you know who you want to deal with and who's a, a greater threat or who you want to ally with and then speaking of diplomacy, you know, who you want to ally with or mess with, you can do that with diplomacy. And here they're showing just one of the options with the ranged marriages. That's going to be very important because now you have the faction tree where you can obviously see, you know, your um, political um, resources in the in the way of, you know, um, daughters or wives and stuff like that. And here you can see uh, another example of the, the strength of the different kingdoms put together. And uh, I wanted to point out a couple of the factions that I pulled out from this that you may have missed. Look at this. These are going to be the various factions. Two of them on the top, the Sabers and the Hunnic Separatists. A couple of interesting things. Look at the wheel next to them. They don't have any number of territories. That means we are going to see the inclusion of barbarian marauding forces, just like in uh, Rome 1 barbarian invasion. Also, I'm very interested, you know, Hunnic Separatists, Eastern Separatists. What is the term Separatist? What does that mean? Is that, you know, especially with regards to the Huns, will they start splintered? Or can you mess with them to the point that they start splintering uh, themselves and then you can deal with them piecemeal, you know, divide and conquer? Stuff like that. That That is very interesting. I will make sure to ask CA about how the Separatist um, type of thing works um, in the future. And then you can see, obviously, the return of the family tree looks very nice, looks very clean. Uh, and you can see just how much stuff you can do um, in this. Um, and then that's going to be basically the overview of how power works, dominion plus control. Dominion is going to be basically, you look internally, and it's your family member's influence versus the other families. So again, we're going to see kind of a, a, a tie over of Rome 2's version where you have <clears throat> inner faction politics. And here, for example, uh, you may have to regulate the... Uh, loyalty of your individual generals and stuff like that so Stilico here is going to be wavering I like to see these types of actions where you have to keep these guys happy and maybe this is what leads to separatist forces if you allow a certain general's loyalty to waver maybe he will revolt and create a separatist force a usurper that's something you would have seen a lot in the third century but might as well see it in the fourth century as well and uh, yeah, here we can see a little bit of the skill tree. I like that they're going back to it being this um, a branching system. It's much easier to follow. Um, and you can see some of the generals, a lot of things you can do, the households, and then the traits. Second wind is going to be back. Speaking of traits, I want to see just how many of the magic abilities are still going to be here. Obviously, second wind is something we saw in Rome too. And I'd like to see what other magic abilities, and I'm doing air quotes as I say this, um, they're including in, in uh, Total War Attila. It looks like they're going to scale it back a bit. And then this is going to be your power inside your faction. And then on the top right, you can see that's exactly the same icon we had for um, Empire Edition, where you can see the level of control you have within your faction. And they say you want to stick around maybe like between 50 and 60%. If you get too powerful, then you get some blowback. Um, but here I'm going to scale, scroll over, you know, the various, I took screen caps of the various um, um, effects of being in different positions. So power weak, you have disloyalty, uh, minus integrity, and then as you go up, you know, get maybe buffs to public order. Uh, and then this is kind of the balanced area you want to be. If you go too far uh, to the right, then you're going to have more um, pushback against yourself. So I like that it's a balancing act. And um, yeah, here you can see, you know, more loyalty, integrity, but then you have uh, negative uh, effects of that. You can also, well, this is a really cool feature, it hails back to like Empire, where you have different people and you can assign them to be um, in charge of different regions in order to have an edict. You have to have a, uh, a particular family member allocated to that region. I think that's a very good move. It makes you tied to your generals. And also here you can see the general right there to the left of this uh, Limitanai border guard and that caption that title in and of itself is a little bit redundant but anyways you can see the general there he's going to actually be the general that you on that tile we saw previously that you allotted to this settlement so he will actually show up on the battlefield map i think that's really cool uh, and then I wanted to pause the screen here as well. Um, I had the mouse had just gone over one of the cavalry units and you can see their stats on the left um, look at some of the stats 
excellent capture power. So it looks like they're going to be putting a little bit more of an emphasis on capture points. I'm not quite sure how that plays out. That's really speculative. And I wonder how that will work, if we'll be seeing more or less capture points. Uh, and there were also some more um, more visible elements that showed off the speed of each unit. I hope that's a little bit more pronounced. And look at this. This is a beautiful image, um, a coliseum that's been destroyed and guarded. And then here you can see the intrigue that we had as a whole separate thing in Total War Run 2. It's now going to be bundled into a little, small, concise panel. And I love the UI. This has been so much better. In particular right here, because they said there's going to be limited slots for your family members to occupy you can have some of them be you know retainers to higher level guys you have this awesome general why not make a, a lower level guy an apprentice to him I think that's a really cool system and on the left you can see the other patricians um, yeah at this point in time it would have been actually the equestrians who had a little bit more power um, we'll talk about that probably in another video and here you can see yeah the tutelage happens and I like how look at the top the the image is slowly moving it looks like the UI has been streamlined it's a lot more interesting dynamic and that's going to be it. We're going over the campaign map that's looking super beautiful. And here you can see a little bit of Constantinopolis. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you next time. I'll make sure to get back to covering those factions that CA revealed. I am a little bit behind on that, so I'll get back to that. Anyways, see you next time.